I'm always researching the highest paying gig apps and platforms for you. That's all I do here. And for some reason, I only mentioned this platform just once recently, briefly. So I wanted to look into it more because I found out they're advertising 20 to $30 an hour on average and 30% more pay than industry averages and $2,000 a month compared to other similar platforms. So I feel like this is something we should look into. This is Freight. Looking for a flexible and rewarding way to make money? Of course, driving for Freight is a great option. We match drivers with companies that need their goods shipped. So this is another last mile delivery service. So you can set your own schedule and earn good money on your own terms. And then on their customer side, they highlight any sized loads from parcels to big and bulky, Freight has you covered. What's nice about Freight with earnings off Options is like a lot of these gig apps, you know, you use your personal vehicle. So I just use my sedan, my Passat. So you can use midsize, you can use a compact vehicle, just, you know, two door, four door, regular vehicle, but all the way to a van or a box truck and more to make even more money on this platform. Of course, I want to show you the pay and the pretty big pay claims here in a second, but let's make sure you're qualified. Here's the qualifications for a car. Now this includes subcompacts and sedans. Now you can see here also midsize for an SUV, minivans, etc. I highlighted some of the main takeaways here, but you can obviously read this whole thing if you want to pause the video, but be at least 21 years old, a valid in-state license for the state in which you reside, an insured driver, you have to be actually the driver on the policy here, ability to lift and carry packages up to 50 pounds. And then regarding the actual vehicle, vehicles must be 20 years or newer. That's not super old. Some of these vehicles, like maybe ride share and the like, would require an even newer vehicle. But conversely, there are some gig apps that don't even have any vehicle age requirements. But here with Freight, not only does your vehicle have to be 20 years or newer, really interesting that they put this here. What do you think about this? Comment down below, please. The vehicle, okay, can have no visible damage or defects. Listen, we're doing a last mile delivery service. I'm delivering something, especially because you can use a truck, a cargo van, a box truck, etc. Those vehicles typically have some wear and tear because they're working on job sites, etc. I don't think I agree with that. And frankly, my Passat is not going to pass because I have some damage on the back there. No visible damage or defects. And by the way, I'm signing up for freight, so stay tuned. Especially on a last mile delivery service, basically no one says that other than like car wrap side hustles like Rapify and Carvertize because they can't have massive damage on the vehicle because they're wrapping your car with like a vinyl wrap. Vehicle cannot display any non-courier signs or ads. So actually that ties in perfectly. So any car wrapping side hustle, I've done Rapify, I've signed up for Carvertize, I've gotten offers on Carvertize, mobile ads, any of that where there's an ad that's wrapped on your vehicle, then you wouldn't qualify for freight. I mean, you're an independent contractor and most of the agreements you have, there's no limitations. You're allowed to do like DoorDash, food delivery, even possibly ride share, as long as it's not like a taxi company. And even some marketplaces allow taxi companies on Uber, let's say. That's those platforms, you can do it with a car wrap. All right, it's a little more stringent there on the qualifications, but at least there's that, you know, incentive of possibly 20 to $30 an hour on average, before you can get that money though, it might sting a bit, you're gonna have to spend money. Spending $40 on a non-refundable application fee, and they say yes, if you get denied for whatever reason, your background check, and I kind of feel like they're just using this to pay the background check company, but whatever, $40 application fee. If you get denied, it's, yeah, non-refundable. You're not getting that back. I know some other platforms do that, not many though. I think GoShare does that. Maybe dispatch, I'm trying to remember. Not a lot of these gig apps do that. Now, it's good and bad, yes. It's bad because you're spending money. It's a business expense, so keep that in mind come tax time. You have to spend money up front, not a huge fan. But I guess it would thin out some applicants from applying. Probably not a ton, what, 5 10%, maybe 15% don't want to apply just for a $40 application fee. If you're using a larger vehicle, let's look at this here, a cargo or sprinter van, here's your requirements. Same driver age, same vehicle age, same vehicle condition requirements, especially on a cargo van and stuff, no visible damage or defects, even for the 
cargo van? I would imagine, though, in practice when you're applying, as long as it's not like crazy damage, and I would hope mine's like a little bit of what, maybe like a fist sized damage area on my back bumper, that if it's reasonable, I would hope like practically you get approved. And another thing that I found kind of odd on the qualification side or requirements, or I guess profile, driver profile side, that's kind of weird is I can only register one vehicle on the freight platform. Can I register multiple? No, drivers are only allowed to have one vehicle associated with their freight account. Drivers are not allowed to have more than one account. Okay, I get having not more than one account, but why would you not be able to have more than one vehicle? If I have a sedan, but if I have, let's say like a company or even just frankly, another vehicle, a truck or a van for whatever reason, and I want to use it, why, like every other app does, I can't just switch the vehicle under my account. It makes sense. The sedan can take some deliveries, whereas the larger truck with the truck bed or van can take other deliveries there. Just let me switch. So now, assuming that all makes sense, and I've done the sign-up process, paid the application fee, my vehicle, singular vehicle, qualifies. Let's get into some of those pay claims. Earn great money. Freight drivers make an average of $20 to $30 per hour, and you can earn even more with tips, which is fantastic. You can get tips on these. The only thing I'd tell you with like stronger hourly earnings is just make sure the route deliveries, the mileage makes sense because they could send you $30 for 28 miles and you're getting cash flow insofar as $30, but you're not getting actual profit. Just remember, obviously there's expenses for operating that vehicle. So if it's like a one-to-one, I call it like a dollar a mile, it's not really making you a lot of money if any actual profit after the expenses. I always aim for at least $1.75, pay it up per mile, ideally two to three dollars plus. Well, they have this preferred driver program, which you'll have to look into that, see if there's an additional cost for that. I clicked on it, it said apply, and it took me to the same application page, so we'll have to see on that. But under that preferred driver program, it says higher income, earn up to 30% more than the industry average as a last mile delivery driver with freight. But they say, $2,000 plus more monthly income than other platforms. Here's an example of a freight driver and their respective earnings. Now, I'm really just looking at, you know, the pay. I'm looking at the mileage. First things I'm looking at, the pay and the mileage. And obviously, you can see some other details there, like the vehicle use and dimensions. Currently, at the time of filming this video, here's all the locations on the freight delivery platform. And again, I did just sign up and they are here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And let me give you an initial verdict of this platform and if it's worth it. I obviously like the pay. The claims of 20 to $30 an hour on average is fantastic. That beats other last mile delivery services in the food delivery parcel in the grocery space. Two considerations I always think of with any platform, especially if they're making strong claims, actually I just thought of a great tie-in, is the Curial platform that averages $30 an hour. But you will find, at least in my experience doing this stuff since 2015, that's fantastic, averaging $30 an hour. Do they send you enough requests? I don't get, well, actually, I haven't gotten any requests on the Curio platform since I got activated. I've only done a few shifts, but they've sent me nothing. So the claims are great, but do you have the actual volume? The same thing that I saw on the now defunct point pickup platform. Really strong earnings, but not enough clients partners where I just did not get enough requests. And then number two, as I already alluded to, the $30 an hour, whatever it's going to be is fantastic. But what are the routes? Are they going to send you like a four stop route that again, it's going to be 27, 28 miles. It's not going to make sense. There has to be a strong margin of pay there. So if it's $30 an hour, I want what? 10 to 15 mile runs maximum. Assuming they're in your marketplace, number one, obviously. But number two, even if it's not busy, if it's not sending you a lot of requests, I've always said, don't delete that thing. Keep it as an option, at least to confirm, are they ever going to send me anything? It's not going to hurt you if they're not going to send you anything. It's just going to be sitting there in the background. And when they do send you stuff, how is it? Is it good enough? 
because you can use it as a filler app. It's filling in your day and your shift there. I like Freight, at least on a preliminary basis. They're just gonna have the same test as every new ramping up or even mid-sized app is, can they keep it going? Can they send drivers enough requests? There's that application fee that might kind of taper some of the applicants a little bit. But yes, the pacing is great and all, the claims are great and all, but are you gonna have the volume and are you gonna have the margin to get drivers and keep them on the platform?